I'm going to be flicking between Cave Horror Slayer and Photoshop while I discuss what I want to discuss here and stay like try to stay with me as best you can and I'm going to try to explain this as best I can and the reason I'm using the old Berserker shield is purely just for like relatability people can see that and go that you know that I'm talking about something that you might be able to recognize and that it's a new shield right because I don't have a design I'm not good at designing shit so that's why it's very basic so I have an idea and I have actually written down dot points for once in my life about a new way to take the melee combat system in old school runescape and this is this means this isn't going to necessarily change the way you do melee combat this is just going to add more mechanical depth which given the recent uh, no monkey controversy i think is uh it's not it's as good as time as any to kind of mention this right um because if you want to add mechanical depth something like this could you know open the market for for a, a lot more content right and I want to also make it clear now, this is like, I, I just thought of this idea today. And I sat there writing down notes thinking about it. So if it's a shit idea, let me know. It's completely like, it's not fleshed out, it's completely raw. It can be completely, it's open to all interpretation. You can suggest whatever you want. You can change whatever you want about it. You can tell me it's a bad idea. You can take good ideas and do whatever you want with it, okay? This is not balanced in any way. Numbers are nowhere near what I want them to be. I'm just pitching ideas, okay? The idea dawned upon me when I was watching um, a Sebe ramble and he was talking about the state of current weapons right and he mentioned the like defender scape mindset right which is currently the meta is just using a defender when it comes to old school runescape so I'm gonna turn the music right down here so I can hear myself think so old school runescape is basically just all defender when it comes to melee and it's great but what if you could make it better what if you could take it further so the idea is to bring shields back and offer a competitive damage potential against the defender, right? He needs to just take an iron and not do everything and best to stop for a bit for no monkey. Yeah, well, I mean, look, this is this is this is a different conversation now anyway. So basically what I what I'm pitching here is that we introduce new shields. Now the way they're introduced is this is an example, that's it. It's not even better, it's the only option. It's the only option, right? So what if we what if we give another option? Um my thinking is that we have bronze to rune and then can go beyond rune, of course. I'll be, I'll be on dragon, of course, like we can with defenders. Um, and it's, it's purely just an alternative to defenders, more than a replacement. So, it will provide similar defensive... I, I'll type this down so we can see it, as I said. Similar defensive... Excuse my spelling if I get it wrong. Stats to, uh, like, kai shields. So, there is tank involved. This is, let's use this example just purely for rune, right? Similar defensive stats to kai shield. Okay. And a um, similar, similar, or better if it's required. The only reason I say or better is because um, you might need to make it better for the sake of like balancing uh, DPS versus damage potential. Uh, strength bonus to the defender as well. All right. Okay. But no offensive accuracy stats. Okay. No offensive accuracy stats okay so there's no plus whatever stab slash whatever okay but there is a strength bonus involved and there is defensive stats involved i've got 62 prey and 17 25 uh total level by the way boys i'll take a gz okay now the reason for that is that way it still offers some sort of competitive dps while you're just actively using the shield right while it's equipped and you're just sending it um what could it require to to make it Spitball an idea, the original kite shield, so your, what's it called, like just a ring kite shield, and then an untradable drop to make it a new untradable shield like um, the Defender. Now, I'm a big fan of untradable items, right? I think the Defender's being untradable is perfect, and I like to keep that mindset. I don't like things being built then then tradable, okay? Love how you just completely read the number wrong. What number wrong? There was a number that I read. Where? 1625? Or did I say 75? Sorry, my bad. Alright, so um, basically... <laughs> shut up, okay? Untradable when made like Defender. It's something you grind once and then you've got it, right? Could be from a boss, could be from a quest, could be from a whole new minigame, could be from the Warriors Guild, could be from anything. That's all open for debate in the near future, okay? These are just core concepts that I think would be cool to acquire the shield and how it's made and what the shield offers you on a base level. Okay, now I think this shield should also offer 
um, a another level of mechanical death. Okay, um, I'm, I'm going to call them. I, I, just for now, I'm calling them parry shields. Okay, it could be called whatever you want. We'll call this the rune parry shield. It could be whatever you want. Doesn't have to be parry. It's just an idea because parrying is a a generic fucking like system in just hand to hand melee in your fucking face combat. All right. It's not Dark Souls or anything like that, okay? Put four Dragon Defenders through the cart. Yeah, just stick Defenders through the cart. It'd be awesome. That's the spikes. It doesn't have to be this design. It just looks like this for relatability, okay? All right. Next, you have options. Multiple options on how the shield works. I've got it. Or how it triggers its effects. You could trigger it by NPC, trigger it by attachment, or trigger it by the weapon you're holding. Um, we'll do... I like the NPC option, so I want to do the NPC option last. So we will do um, weapon first, okay? Triggered by weapon. Because I think this is the shittest idea, but it's still an idea I want to pitch anyway, because the, the, you know, all I, the, there are bad ideas, but there's no wrong ideas, right? So what does that mean? That means determining the size of your opponent and whatever weapon you're holding will depend on how the shield affects your combat. There is a... I should probably put it here as well, sorry. This is really, like, rough, so do bear with me. There is a, um, base set effect. How the set is affected or calculated depends on maybe the better the shield, the more likely the the, fet, the, the set is to, um, trigger. So it's a base parry effect, okay? Okay, how it's, how the, how often the effect triggers purely depends on balancing, okay? We don't know. Let's just say, uh, you have a 15% chance, okay? The example... Example, 15%, all right? So you have a 15% chance to parry. What does that mean? If this, if, if it's balanced off of weapons, if you are using the crush attack style, so for example, the Inquisitor's Mace, okay? And you're fighting a one by one creature as well, you can stun him. But if he's two by two and bigger, you deal uh, recoil damage, for example, okay? based on the attack. Okay, what does stunning mean? Stunning just means that the enemy misses an attack. Just an idea, okay? For for small, did I get a black mask? Hell yeah, let's go. Sounds good, thank you. So, stunning just means on small monsters only, which is how often do you fight small monsters? Slayer, they miss an attack cycle. That's it. They're, not even these guys would count. Got another black mask. Awesome, cool. So, what that means, <laughs> what what that means is like, yeah, you're fighting Faldor guards. You're fighting. I don't even know what is a one by one monster anymore. Like, there's there's too many. There's not many small monsters left in the game. Not many high end one by one monsters. But if you are, you have a chance for them to just miss an attack cycle while you're wearing crush. If they're two by two or bigger, recoil damage. If you're using the stab attack style, again, this is all just. Speculation. I think this is the worst style, by the way. Uh, the, the, the worst system. If you're using stab, regardless, it's increased accuracy. It can, be, it can go as far as guaranteeing a hit the next time you attack. Okay? It can go as far as guaranteeing a hat. Uh, sorry, a, hat, a hit the next time it triggers. So it triggers the parry. The next time you attack that monster, you're guaranteed to hit it. If it's a, with a stab weapon. No matter what. I think if this, if a system like that is in place, especially if it's a guaranteed hit, you have to, like, say, we use this as an example here, okay? This guy attacks me, and it triggers. I have to click him again now, kind of like Jones Foundry, to trigger that, that effect on the shield. If I don't click him, and I'm just AFKing, it doesn't affect, right? So you, you have to also physically interact with the, the game to trigger that effect. If you miss it, it's too bad, okay? Could be, you know, increases accuracy. What's up, Rob? How are you, man? Must have vulnerable due to successful parry type shit. Yeah, like that. You click it, next time you go to attack it, and it works only on that monster. Not like, you, you can't trigger on one monster and attack another one with it, right? And then I think with Slash... Excuse me. I think with Slash, it's a similar sort of um, attack style. Sorry, the screen keeps flashing red. If I don't have it, my I lose another hardcore Iron Man life, so I need to have my screen flashing red. I know it's annoying. Um... With Slash, I think it's a similar concept to Stab. 
But I think it's increased max hit. Increased. Increased max hit for the next hit. Um, and minimum hit. So, your max hit could be, instead of being 51 with the Blade of Salador, your max hit could now be 55, but a minimum hit of 15 maybe. So you can't hit less than 15. Provided you click the monster again, you're guaranteed to do some sort of damage, guaranteed to do some sort of minimum damage. Just an idea, it's called Gold Dust, Braden. Just, just purely speculation. That's just an idea that I think you could pitch shields in, okay? Wearing the shield and it triggering a parry can then cause you to change the way that combat is, is done while, while you're fighting, okay? You still get a good strength bonus from the shield, so you still have a decent max hit comparable to defenders. You're slightly less accurate, but if you're using a stab weapon, and if it's like a 15% proc chance, for example, the accuracy could really come in handy on higher level monsters. Now, I think... While I've got all this here, it's also worth mentioning um, that uh, what fuck what was I gonna what was I gonna add? Um, make this bigger. I was gonna add um, uh, shit. I've got it written down. I think. Yes. Okay. So I think this this rule should apply to all all the ideas I have from this shield, no matter what. And the rule is. That this works strictly on melee attacks against you and works on melee and close ranged mage hits. Okay, they don't have to damage you, they just, they just need to be attacks. So I think within two tiles, it could be more than that, could be less than that. But I think, for example, you're fighting Verzik. Okay? You're fighting Verzik, and Verzik's attacking you, but you're only one tile away from her with range attack. You could still trigger the shield and have increased accuracy or max hit against her, for example. Or recoil damage from the shield if you're using a crush weapon for some reason on Verzik. T Papa Slice, you're just crushing his scythe, you know? So, that's. That way it keeps the combat relevant against monsters that don't just melee you in tri breeding situations. Does it work in PvP? Probably not ideal in PvP. But for PvM, I think this is a direction you could take it, right? Parry chance should scale off your defense roll against them. It could. It could. There's many ways they can do it. This is just an example of 15%. That is what, like, this is just an example if you balance off weapons, right? I think that's the worst idea that I've got. Okay? Might be the worst. Might be the second worst idea. Let me uh, just uh, save as. Where do I save it? Let me um, put it in my downloads folder as um, idea. Because then I want to... Um, save as again, as idea two. Okay, now now this one I want to do, this is with attachments, okay? But all this stuff at the top stays the same. Same idea, just with attachments this time. Now it's not to do with what weapon you're holding, because I think what weapon you're holding could, could be too confusing and too overwhelming and too difficult to manage, I think. Do you think something similar could be added to range and mage, uh, melee? Or to the range of magic to keep the three combat styles equally as engaging? I, I don't think so. I don't think you really need to. I think this, this is purely just for like a, the melee combat system. That's all I'm looking at here. I'm not trying to look at range or, or magic. Because I think range is incredibly fucking strong regardless. I think magic, especially with the shadow currently, is, is in, in a decent enough spot for now. At least. I just think uh, this is just purely um, to mix up the way melee combat is done. This can, this can be... Very impactful in places like Tia Way, Theater of Blood, even Melee Inferno. Like the meta at the end game will shift dramatically because of idea like because of things like this. Um, so I think with attachments, it's simple. You just have an attachment that applies effects. Uh, effects. I don't know, is that Hay Spell effects? Maybe it's with me, I can't remember. That um, determine hold on. Plus effects that are... Can you get back into combat, please? How do I word that? Plus effects that um, activate based on NPC size. That's really all. So, I think this is a bad idea. But it could be just an attachment for the shield. And that, that, that shield, the effect is determined by the attachment and the size of the NPC. 
because I think it's important that the size of the NPC can can really change the way the shield works, right? Because you shouldn't be able to fucking stun and parry big targets. It doesn't make sense. Bit of a scale for the attack types. For example, stab 10 to 30, slash 5 to 35, and crush 1 to 40. What's that for, do you mean? Accuracy-wise? Or like the, the reason they... The, the way that they trigger. Question is, does the defense equal or outweigh the defender in terms of DPS loss? Well, the DPS loss... The, the thing is, these shields, ideally, when balanced, okay, this reminder, this is when it's balanced. The shields should sacrifice damage per second for greater damage potential, right? Especially if you bring a switch. Now, that would mean that they would have to be, they would have to trigger quite consistently, and the increased max hit and increased accuracy would definitely have to be, um, would, would definitely have to like be quite noticeable and quite consistent. But ideally, if you apply the right numbers and and keep the strength bonus on the shield, so your max hit isn't hindered, just your accuracy is by not wearing a defender, you can absolutely increase your potential damage without overdoing the DPS or under undercutting the DPS. Because that's the main thing, right? It's all about damage per second versus damage potential. Just about DPS? No, this is, be, this is likely going to be worse DPS outright because you're going to be less accurate. But it's going to be better damage potential because you could get back-to-back -back procs which could trigger massive hits consistently. Right? Would Defender be mid-game uh, offhand? So the idea, let, let me give you the last example. This is just attachments and this is a shit idea instantly, okay? Um, and then we go, we'll go idea three, and let me give you idea three, and then I can go into that after, because that kind of answers, that, that's triggering the next sort of, like, um, conversation I want to have. And this is purely, so the, this is, this is my favorite way to manage the shields, in my opinion, which is based on NPC size, okay? So I think the shields react, no matter what, you basically pick it up, you make it, and it's like a defender. You've got it equipped, you've got a shield, okay? And the shield... The effects of the shield react based on the size of the NPC, no matter what you're fighting. And it's similar to the way the weapons are. One by one, by one enemies are stunned for one attack cycle. One of their attack cycles. So, that's that's it. You're fighting anything. What's a, what's a one by one target that isn't like a man that you fight these days in this game? There aren't really many, to be honest. Most things are two by two onwards. So, this would be used in like, ideally just like, like little slayer grinds. Not really much endgame content involves little little targets that are one by one, right? It's not very common. Then you have targets that are two by two. And this is where you can apply either. I think, I, I, uh, the only reason I throw the recoil effectors in there is, is in case people are worried it's too strong. I think recoil is too weak for this. Like clue bosses? Yeah, clue bosses. No, that's a good example. I, I think two by two targets, this includes giants, cave horrors, this includes things like Vardabus, you know? They could go from any range, giant bats, anything two by two, blood velder two by two, I'm pretty sure. I think two by two targets, um, you should be given increased accuracy against possible guaranteed hit. That, that it could even be guaranteed hit, okay, on your next attack. Provided you click the target, right? You have to still do that interactive. It's only one click, but you click the target and it, it you guarantee a hit against it, right? That's all it is. I'm attacking I'm attacking the cave horror, the parry procs. I click him, he highlights like Giant's Foundry. I click him, did I do 1v1? One by one. You know what I mean, right? You, you know what I fucking mean, okay? It highlights, I click him, and he... You know, I'm guaranteed to hit him on the next attack. Or I've got real, I've got increased accuracy against him. Okay? Really liked your long two-hour video on uh, Pleader Jarrett. You had great points and smart attitude. Thank you, uh, Aleski. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. And now, this is where I was a little stunned. because I or stumped, sorry. I don't know if it should be 3x3 three three and that's it. Or 3x3 three three and then go... This could be 3x3. Three three and are there any 4x4 four four targets? I don't know. But 3x3 three three targets, I think, should be increased strength. Increased... Max and minimum hit. And that means a 3x3 or bigger even. So anything 3x3 and bigger. Could keep it simple. You could go even bigger for 5x5 if you wanted. But anything bigger than 3x3 in my opinion. You have an increased max and minimum hit. 
instead of a max hit of 22, say these guys were free by three, and he procs and I click him, my max hit could be even 50% higher. Who knows? I could hit bigger. I've got a guaranteed lower max hit. I'm at Kakuchi sub five. So is Verzik, you know? So is Bloat. So is Maiden. Uh, so is a, a lot of different NPCs. But do you, do you bridge a gap or do you just stop at 3x3 three three and just apply that to everything above it, you know? Roll plus 5 or something? Exactly, yeah. And your minimum hits also increase. So you can still hit a 0 if you miss. But it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a critical hit, you know? Because bigger targets, if you want to use logic, bigger targets are easier to hit, right? And if you parry off a bigger target, you should be able to just smack him harder or some shit. Doesn't stun him. It's purely just an idea. But that's like... What's, what that's doing, if it's if you can trigger the parry consistently enough and you stay consistent on that damage, bring in a defender switch mid-raid for smaller targets. You might not want to stun smaller targets, but you, you, you mix in the defender on smaller targets or runes you don't want to use the shield on, and then you take the shield into uh, runes with bigger targets where you want to have that extra max hit potential. You could really keep the gap, or keep the DPS, DPS similar to just running a defender but your potential to do more damage is there. Like, you have a lot more potential to hit big if you wanted to, right? Adding a vulnerable period is probably ideal. I think so, right? It doesn't have to be a big window. It could be a smaller window um, in certain instances or a smaller window on bigger targets. Maybe 5x5 five five is the same, but, like, you have less time to react. But it's just another way to kind of incorporate shields, a new shield system, offhand switches for melees, um, and just another way to interact while, melee, while doing melee combat. You don't have to. It doesn't completely eliminate defenders because defenders still offer a consistent damage per second, especially at, at smaller mobs and especially in the earlier to mid game. And even at the end game, you can still do end game content with a defender comfortably. But if you want to go to the next level, if you want to do speed running, if people like No Monkey want more mechanical depth, add using this shield to your melee inferno runs and speed run with that. You'll be slightly tankier. And you can get off extra stuns on the nibblers, the little, the little, the little blobs that come out of the big blobs. You can get off increased accuracy on the bats, and on the majors and the rangers, you can get extra max hits and a minimum hit at, at a sacrifice of your defender. You know, the way a shield looks brings back fist of ghost memories. That's why I use that shield, yeah, for relatability. So that that is like the floor pitch of the shield type. Is it a bad idea? Feel free to let me know. Do you think anything like that could work? Do you think it's overkill? I'm just simply thinking of a new way to handle a defender or an offhand for melee that can make inter uh, combat more interactive, more customizable. It, um, I've got, um, what else have I written down here for it? Um, I think that, yeah, it will unlock new mechanical depth, especially to end game content. Because, yeah, top tier way and melee inferno are definitely going to be, if you want to go even faster, you can with these shields. All depends on balancing, right? If they don't, if they're not balanced properly, then what's the point, right? Seems OP. Well, that's why you you balance it so it's not OP, right? You don't want it to. No, no, I can't steam hands. Uh, you, you don't want it to outdo the defender unless you are actively using the the mechanics. Then it can outdo the defender. It wouldn't help the scythe though. Well, the defender doesn't help the scythe anyway, so I don't think it really matters, right? But maybe you want to take a a blade and shield switch and a scythe. What about using the fang in places? You don't use um I don't know if it would work on something like Ohm, but Ohm's hand even increased strength if you if you get it off on that. Then again, Ohm doesn't attack you, so it wouldn't work on that. What if you instead um instead of a shield made it where you can get those benefits from two-handing or one-handed weapon? Maybe you could. You could apply that logic to a two-handed weapon if you wanted to. Shield looks amazing, it looks like uh Looks a bit like a blue spark shell from Mario Kart. It's from, uh, it's from RuneScape 2. What's up, Timmy Turner? How are you, man? Game Codler, what's up? How about being able to attack instantly after successfully parrying an attack by clicking again? Uh, similar to Giant Spider. Yeah, so in, instead of like, um, instead of like an increased accuracy, um, it's like kind of like a, a, um, granite mall spec where you just instantly get a free attack off. That's cool. Not a bad idea. Re re reset attack timer. E even if you do that on uh, one by ones, even maybe me or two by two, maybe. I could write that down here too. I'll put it on here so that way I've got it written down. Don't forget it. Um, I'll just write bonus idea. Um, parry equals instant attack. 
Not a bad idea. Like, they, these are just ideas that can be changed. It might not be used. might be too powerful. I think the parry mechanic uh, should always be defensive. Um, defining... What do you mean by defensive? Wearing a shield? May make things uh, that have higher tick cycles more viable and open up options to new weapons? I think so. Absolutely. Yeah. Should it punish spam clicking then? You can't spam click it. What do you mean? What do you mean? No, you can't sit there spam clicking. Well, I mean, you could, but what, how, why would that be punishing? Like, if you want to sit there spam clicking your target in case it procs, I think that's totally fine. Maybe it could punish it, but that's just the way that, that comes down to balancing, not not the, just the core pitch, right? Jax does seem to like the two-handed weapons lately. So, uh, Shadow, Soul Reaper. Yeah, because that kind of pulls you away from the defender, right? Because with single-handed weapons, you have to remember that people are going to wear a defender to, to keep it relevant. So that makes sense. But, I, I, I mean, look. Could it be applied to two-handers? It could. It could be applied to two-handed weapons, absolutely. Clicking in time plus defense, uh, defense for a few ticks, reduce accuracy for the enemy. Yeah, it could do. You could even have, like, if you get attacked three by three, um, could just make you tankier. The next attack on you is a zero. Provided it's not like a one-hit mechanic. Like, for dragon, uh, the fireball from Vorkar won't count. Maybe the dragon card shield actually useful somewhere? Yeah, well, you take a, a card shield and you, you, you apply the... The changes now the final bit i want to add on this before I, I wrap up the idea is that i've written here because i didn't want to forget this i was like i was parenting today so i was busy um that with the correct balancing i think this could um give players a lot more variety with their play style at any level of the game and when i say that it's like what i mentioned earlier is that you don't need to use these shields you can still do all the content in the game comfortably with a defender right you can still do the raids, come to with a defender, and the defender is on average, in my in my mind, in a perfect world, if it's balanced correctly, the defender will give the casual player more consistent damage per second. You're not going to suffer by not using defenders. But if you use the shield, your initial damage per second will be lower, but the potential for you to do more damage is greater. And I think it'll be more impactful on targets that attack faster. As well, right? The more you get hit, the more likely you are to be parried. And this doesn't mean damage hit. It just means by an attack on you is, is a hit, right? All right, we don't need this or this. Take this cannon and go. We've done this task. Let's fucking get out of here. Two Black Masters, huge. Oh, there's an assault head there. Damn it. Oh, well. All right? So that that's that's one idea. That, that That's kind of where I, I want to, like, see it. I want it to see, I want to see it balanced with greater potential and unlocking us... Uh, sorry, unlocking more ways to play the game which could then bring more bosses more mechanics more weapons more ways to interact with melee right especially after vardavis even where you got to click on the screen that's awesome where's slay helmet nerd thank you Mape. it's coming jagus wouldn't do this why not if it's a good enough idea and you think it's good and they can make it work why wouldn't it be why wouldn't they do it you don't you don't think jagus would do something like this i think they absolutely could if they wanted to um it can be it can bring great great potential to the melee combat system um, at the cost of guaranteed DPS, uh, some kills will be uh, super quick while most other kills will be slower than your average with a defender, which is the idea, right? The defender will give you more consistent damage per second. The high level play players are going to want to, like, ideally, if it's balanced right again, I keep saying that, but if it is, the high level players will look at using this more than the defender. The Fang is, is simply a, a result of lazy stat assignment, if we're being honest, especially with bosses that was seen hard um, back... Uh, when TB was introduced. I, I, I think maybe the, the Fang was overlooked on release at least. Defenders are a part of the combat achievements uh, by being able to add the hilt to it. Maybe throw this as a reward for something like that. Now, I think this as a reward is a bit too little. Throwing this in as a reward is crap. I think the, this, this brings potential for a new quest reward, a new boss reward, a new raid reward. You do a raid, you get your attachments for the shield. Fuck someone on the combat achievements or something people have already done. Right? They, they fucked that out the window completely. Like, this this is low quest reward. Maybe. Because you could use this early game. It could be just a low quest reward. And then, for bigger end game shields beyond rune or beyond dragon, will require you to do harder bosses. But it could be a guild expansion even for the shields, yeah. I think depending, it depends on how you introduce it, how complicated you want it to be. Maybe you define it, combine the defenders with the shields and add defense and lo lose accuracy. I think defenders could be completely diff separate from it. So that way you have the complete... You have variety over defender and shield. Best item with quest boss, range upgrades? Possible. I think it's important to remember that I, I think it should absolutely work on close range and mage hits. 
So if you're within melee range or one tile from the target, or maybe even two tiles, it should still be able to parry on them. I think a quest that showcases its uses and to go beyond like rune or something will require a new quest for you to equip the dragon one and so on. Maybe, but that that's that's all even if people look at this idea and go, that's a good idea. This is just me making something up that I think would be cool to see that is different. Um, but still keeps the old school nature of combat alive. We're not we're not taking things beyond what we can't control. I think it's just an idea. Um, I think the numbers uh, and effects are completely open ended uh, for correct balancing, which is what I've been saying pretty much the whole time. Uh, so we don't have too big of a power creep. But ideally, you'd want these shields to be a competitive alternative to defenders at a casual level while providing a stronger and more rewarding option at end game PVM at the cost of skill based gameplay, which is what I've been basically saying the whole time. That's what I've had written down. Is that I, I would like this to be the preferred min max method. Bring hand cannons back. Didn't they blow up on you and kill you? Legends Quest 2, that's called Dragon Slayer 2. I, again, I, this is just an idea. If you guys think it's cool, awesome. I'm probably going to cut this into a video so people can have a look and judge it as well on YouTube. But that's what I I, I want to look at. I, I, if, if Jagex even remotely looks at it and goes, no, that's enough. I, I'm, I'm happy with that still. But I think this is a cool idea that could really help um, the melee system in RuneScape. Shield existing before, right? Yes, I'm just, I used that, I used, I chose this shield for like relatability, nothing else. Yellow text and black background makes S tier, of course. Yellow text, black background is always a win, right? Everyone loves that shit. So I'm gonna save that there for now. Um, and and I'll, I'll post it on YouTube and let me know what you guys think. Feel free to go to the video after the stream and comment on it as well. Let me know what you think. If you have any more ideas, any pictures, if it's crap, anything you, you think would be worth changing, because if you genuinely think it's alright and people get and it gets enough traction, I'm happy to fucking push for it and, and help try to get this into the game because I think this could really th this could open up more ways to do melee combat without bringing new broken weapons, right? The scythe, the, the scythe isn't strong enough. The fang's too broken. Where's the sorry axe going to go? Add a new fucking shield. It's only a small part of the the system, but it can really change the way you play. And if that means that taking a shield and blade switch with a scythe into Tob is a good idea, or a rapier and shield switch, giving the rapier more use, because you want, if they roll off of stab accuracy or whatever, if we go with the weapon system, but if that means bringing a switch, an offhand switch, or a, 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 along with a two-handed weapon to a, a monster, means that you, you want to be able to use those parry effects, you're just opening up another can of worms for people to experience PVM. Especially the sweatier players as well. The high-end community will, will want to find more engaging content, right? New ways to tackle bosses. A lot more depending on RNG as well, but I mean... Why not? That way not everyone's running around with a defender. Now you have people with shields as well. Bubba. Like, if you could just smack the fuck out of Bubba for him hitting you the amount of times he hits you as well, that'd be awesome. So that that's an idea. That's just what I think. Um, if it's crap, I'll leave it alone after the video. If it's good, then we can talk about it more. Offhand special buffs in general is a good idea. Let alone uh, just a shield idea. It could scale a range of mage. Yeah, I think so, of course. PVM, yeah. What would you call it? PIVM? Need to get the sailing team on this one? Well, when they're done with sailing, yeah. My opinion, I think shields should have non-damage boosting effects, like having the crystal shield reflect 10% damage taken at 1-4 chance. Um, or other unique effects that don't even boost damage. The shield reflecting 10% damage is boosting damage. It's like re recoil is boosted damage, right? Attack style bonuses on higher tier shields, maybe? Maybe. Anyways, that's the pitch, guys. Um, let's do some more racism. We got two black masks, that fucking... Two black masks! God damn! This is the easiest room in the raid. It's quite simple. You got a big boy. Look at him, god damn! Fuck, mate, look at that boy. It's huge!